Today we're going to look at a really interesting limit that involves a little bit of a generalization of the factorial. So our goal is to find the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth root of, well, I'm going to call this n pound. And well, what is n pound? Well, it's the primorial of n. And it's defined to be the product of all primes less than or equal to n. So as an example, 7 pound is equal to 2 times 3 times 5 times 7. And that's because, well, those are all of the primes less than or equal to 7. If you take that product, you get 210. But observe that that's the same thing as 8 pound, 9 pound, and 10 pound. Because all of the primes less than or equal to those numbers are, well, the same as the primes less than or equal to 7. And in order to evaluate our limit, we're going to use this nice tool known as Abel summation. So let's define a function f of x as the sum as n goes from 0 to x, or really as n is less than or equal to x, of a sub n. Then the sum as n is less than or equal to x of a sub n times g of n, where g is a smooth function, is equal to f of x g of x minus the integral from 0 to x of f of t times g prime of t dt. So this can be seen as some sort of integration by parts. Okay, so let's see how this goes. I'm going to start over here with this term on the left hand side and via some calculations on this, well, we will end up with this formula. So let's start here. We've got this integral from 0 to x of f of t g prime of t dt. But then I'm going to write this using the definition of our function f of t. So this is going to be the integral from 0 to x and then the sum as n is less than or equal to t of a sub n times g prime of t dt. But now those a sub n's are simply numbers. So if we could somehow change summation and integration, well then this integral would be fairly simple with the fundamental theorem of calculus. Okay, so let's draw a picture of what's going on here. So here I'm going to put the t axis and here I'll put the n axis. It's going to be important to have this line here, which is the line n equals t. But now notice the values of n are less than or equal to t, so that's going to be below this line. And then the values of t goes from 0 to x. So we're looking at this portion right here, which is this triangle. But then t is a continuous variable, whereas n is a discrete variable. So we're actually integrating slash summing over these like disjoint horizontal lines. So I'll draw the picture something like this. Okay, nice. But now that picture should hopefully make it clear how to change the summation and integration. So observe that now it's going to look something like this. We're going to take n less than or equal to x because now n will go from 0 up to x and then we're going to be integrating from little n up to x. So that's the value of t. Notice t can go from n up to x after changing this order. And then let's see, now we're going to have an a sub n here and a g prime of t dt. But now let's observe that that n summation is outside of the integral. So that means we can pull this a sub n out and we might as well do that and we're left with something inside of the sum which is fairly easy to calculate using the fundamental theorem of calculus. So this is going to turn into the sum as n is less than or equal to x of a sub n times g of x minus g of n. So we've got something that looks like that. But now I'm going to split that into two pieces. So I have g of x times the sum of n is less than or equal to x of a sub n, and then minus the sum as n is less than or equal to x of a sub n times g of n. But let's look closely at this 
first term and observe that that sum is exactly the way that we're defining our function f of x over here. So this is equal to uh, f of x times g of x after switching the order of our multiplication minus this sum as n is less than or equal to x of a sub n times g of n. So looking closely over here at the left hand side and uh, over here at the right hand side, we see that it's a pretty simple reordering to get over here to, you know, this standard way of writing our able summation. Okay, so let's see where we can go from here. Okay, so now from here, I'm going to define a new function. And this is known as, well, one of the Chebyshev functions. So it's generally denoted by theta of x. And this is in fact equal to the sum over all primes that are less than or equal to x of the natural log of those primes. But now I'm going to rewrite this in a way so that we can use this formula. And the way that I'm going to rewrite it is like this. So I'm going to sum over all n less than or equal to x of a sub n times the natural log of n, where a sub n is equal to zero if n is a composite number, and it's equal to one if n is a prime number. So it's like asking the question, are you prime or composite? But notice, well, this clearly collapses into the sum that we were starting with. Okay, but well, what does that mean? That means if we take the sum over all n less than or equal to x of a sub n, we get pi of x, the prime counting function. Remember, pi of x is equal to the number of primes less than or equal to x. But that's exactly what we're getting here. We're adding one to itself exactly that many times. So now we can use our able summation formula where g of x is the log function. And then, well, let's see. And then f of x is this pi of x function. So this is gonna turn into pi of x times the natural log of x and then minus the integral from two up to x of pi of t over t dt. And you might say, well, why am I going from two up to x? Well, that's because two is the appropriate lower bound in this case. Notice over here, I left the lower bound kind of open, but you know, if we're talking about primes, the smallest possible prime is two, so it makes sense to start right there. Okay. Okay, so now from here, what we're gonna do is look at the following limit. So if we take the limit as, I'll say x goes to infinity of our theta of x over x, well, that's gonna turn into the limit as x goes to infinity of pi of x over x over the natural log of x. So I wrote that in a funny way because we're gonna use a very famous theorem to know the value of that and then minus one over x times the integral from two to x of our pi of t over t dt. Okay, but now, like I said, we're gonna use a very famous theorem to know that the value of this is one. And that famous theorem is the prime number theorem. So we're not gonna prove that here, that's beyond the scope of this video. And then what about this other bit? Well, it turns out that the limit of this other bit is equal to zero. And well, you can prove that with the prime number theorem as well, but maybe I'll leave this little detail as a nice homework calculation for you to do. So let's see what we have. We've got this limit of theta of x over x equal to one, but then also what do we know? But also we know that theta of n is in fact equal to the natural log of the primordial of n. In other words, n pound. And that follows from this definition of n pound over here, along with logarithm rules, how it splits a product up into a sum. Okay, so, well, what are the two big facts we have on this board? We've got this limit as x goes to infinity of theta x over x is equal to one. And then we have theta of n is related to this natural log of n pound. 
Okay, so let's see how we can use these two facts to evaluate our goal limit. Okay, so here are the things that we've developed so far, and now we're ready to evaluate our final limit here. So I'm going to set L equal to this limit. So the limit is N goes to infinity of the nth root of N pound. And you can really kind of view this as being some sort of indeterminate form. So notice this n pound is clearly tending towards infinity. And then we're raising it to the 1 over n power, which is tending to 0. So this is an indeterminate form of type infinity to the 0. But how do we handle these sorts of indeterminate forms? Well, the general rule is we take the logarithm and then go from there. So let's see, that means that the log of L is equal to this limit as N goes to infinity of, well, this is going to be 1 over N times the log of N pound. But now, using everything that we have over there, that's going to be the limit as N goes to infinity of theta of N over N, which you know, like we decided before, was equal to 1. We did that calculation. But let's see. That means that the natural log of our limit is equal to 1, which tells us that, in fact, our limit is equal to e. So I think this is a nice result. This is probably some sort of expression for Euler's constant e that is less well known than some other expressions. So as a conclusion, we've got this limit as n goes to infinity of the nth root of the primorial of n is equal to e. And that's a good place.